We are making one of my favorite Thanksgiving classics, a sweet potato casserole with a streusel topping. It is a must have at my Thanksgiving table. And if you have been around Lara in the kitchen for at least a decade, this recipe will seem very familiar to you because I've made it with for you before. It's been a few years and since we are doing all the classics, I had to share a Thanksgiving sweet potato casserole because it is a must have on my Thanksgiving table. You can take away everything else, but if you take away the, the sweet potato casserole, I will have a fit because it is my favorite. And I'm gonna show you how to make it. It's very simple and very easy, but there are a few things in here that I feel like make all of the difference. Let's start with some sweet potatoes. I like sort of smaller size sweet potatoes because I find that they cook a lot more even and they take a whole lot less time in the oven to cook. Which brings me to my next point. I like to roast my sweet potatoes or bake them, I should say, rather than boil them. Because when you boil a potato, you're introducing a lot of moisture, you're introducing water, which is fine for something like a mashed potato, but when I want something that's a bit more fluffy and almost souffle-like, I don't want to introduce any water to the potato because it'll make it runny, it'll make it runny, <laughs> runnier. Um, but how you bake your sweet potatoes, you have a couple of choices. You can take all the potatoes like this, pierce them, put them on a baking sheet, pop them in a 350 oven an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the size, or you can peel them and give them a rough chop so that they cook a little bit faster, which is what I'm going to do today. I'm still gonna roast them in the oven. I just peel them, that way it saves me from having to do that after they are baked. And then I just cut them into big chunky quarters, put them in a baking dish that I've lined with parchment paper. And the reason why I do that is because sweet potatoes will give off some sugar and sweetness and they will caramelize and bubble and kind of stick to your baking sheet. And then it becomes really difficult to wash. So I just line my baking sheet or my roasting pan uh, for this portion with some parchment paper and it stops that from happening. So I'm gonna peel all of them because I need about two and a half pounds or so, about three pounds of sweet potatoes. And once I'm there, I'll show you the next step. Potatoes are peeled. I give them a quick little rinse a -roo, and then I just cut them in just big chunks like that. It's gonna take a lot less time to cook this way and they just get all just delicious and caramelized and so yummy. Um, I, like I said, have them on a baking sheet that's lined with parchment paper and a baking pan actually. And they're gonna be so fantastic. My oven's already ready and preheated. You can do this part of cooking your sweet potatoes a couple of days in advance if you are hosting a big Thanksgiving and you just wanna get some stuff done ahead of time. You can absolutely roast them days in advance and then say Thanksgiving is on Thursday, I will roast them on Tuesday and then just leave them in the fridge in a, cover, in a container covered. And that way there's one less thing for you to have to do the day of or even the day before. I love anything that I can do to get ahead. I will absolutely do. Beautiful, almost there, a couple more. I love these sizes, they're just perfect. They're not too big, they don't take too long to cook. And I love that. I'm going to do nothing to these with the exception of uh, covering them with some aluminum foil and popping them into my oven until they're very tender. This size will take maybe about 45 minutes or so. I'm just gonna cover these up and pop them in. My sweet potatoes are nice and tender. I've let them cool a bit so that I can handle them. They're not the most beautiful at the stage, but trust me, they are perfect. And you can see they're not really bathing in a ton of liquid, but that's a good thing because all the flavor that you have here is just concentrated and sweet and yummy and delicious. And if you're not from the US, like I'm not, I wasn't born and raised here. I was born and raised in Italy, so we don't have a Thanksgiving. I never even had sweet potatoes before moving to the US. So if a recipe like this just feels really wrong and like strange and like you've never had anything like it, Chances are it's most definitely like an American thing and it's so good. So don't knock it till you try it. Definitely worth trying. And I'm thinking, I haven't done this, but I think, see how soft they are? I barely had to touch them to mash them up. Uh, don't use a food processor. It'll turn this into a liquid. And I think 
You could probably even do this with pumpkin or like some kind of a sweet squash and you'll get like the same kind of idea. Okay, to your mashed sweet potatoes, that is so good right now, to be honest, you're gonna add a pinch of salt. You're gonna make sure it's a good pinch of salt. And then you're going to add brown sugar and brown and granulated sugar. You're gonna add two eggs. I like to crack them in a separate bowl just in case you ever get like a bad egg because you never know, you know, that can happen. And then you're gonna add a splash of milk. Bum, 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 about a quarter cup. And then some softened or melted butter. I have maple butter here that I just made for something else and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna add that right in because it wastes nothing. And then I just do this with a spoon, you can do it with a fork, a spatula, whatever, and just, Mix it until it's well combined. Okay, I'm all ready now at this point. I've got my baking dish ready. I had another one here, but it was just too small. Baking dish all ready. Now, before you ask me why we eat this on Thanksgiving, I just don't know. <laughs> I don't make the rules. It's just a Thanksgiving classic, and this version is the best and the recipe will never change because it needs absolutely no improving. Now I like to make like a streusel pecan topping situation. That is my favorite part because when it mixes with that sweet potato, it's spectacular and you just need cold butter, unsalted, brown sugar and a little bit of flour and a lot of chopped pecans or pecans, whatever you call them. And just take a pastry cutter. You can also just use two forks or a single fork, or you can just do this with your fingers, whatever your heart desires. And you just wanna cup that butter into that sugar and flour mixture. And if it gets stuck on your pastry cutter, just do that. Add your pecans or pecans, mix it with your hands, and then just Sprinkle this all over the top and it just it's so good. It's absolutely ridiculous It is ridiculous. Why does it taste so good next to my corn pudding corn souffle? Whatever you call it, which the recipe for that is on LaurenTheKitchen.com. It is so yummy um, I, I don't know. Why does it taste so good with cranberry sauce? I don't know. I don't make the rules The food gods made the rules and then I just followed them and I made each dish so delicious and they're all divine. Anyway, this goes into my oven at 350, about 30 minutes or so. I will show you what it looks like when it is done. Look at that. Look at it. It's just sort of puffed up and it's sizzling and it's gorgeous. The top is really nice and crispy. Look at those edges that have caramelized. It is sensational. This will sort of fall a bit as it cools. If you are, a sweet potato casserole with marshmallow type of person, which I am, but I know there's a lot of you that are not. This is the point when you would wanna to top this with your mini marshmallows and pop it back into the oven for like five minutes just until they puff up and sort of melt and get that little bit of brown on top. Um, so that is what I would do at this stage, but I'm gonna leave it like this just for now because it is beautiful and then you can actually see the layer of sweet potato and the top is really nice and gotten crispy. It's gonna be really hot to take a bite of this right now, but listen, it has not stopped me before. However, I am gonna need to wait for this to cool down a second. See if it can get right in that corner because it'll allow you to really see how beautiful the texture is. It's just really like fluffy and light and literally heavenly, but just give me a minute because this is going to be hotter than I can imagine and I love you, but I also love my palate intact. It is the best. It's my favorite thing on the Thanksgiving table without fail every single year. I don't know what it is about it, but maybe it is because when I started making this is when I started think, like hosting Thanksgiving so then it just became part of my traditional Thanksgiving table. So I just think back memories, it just feels good, it's nostalgic, it's all the things. 
The recipe is obviously on LaurenInTheKitchen.com and so are many, many, many other Thanksgiving perfect recipes that will get you out of a bind if you need one. We've got beautiful desserts like a pumpkin roll and we have a pecan pie. All the classics are all there for you. This concludes the end of our Thanksgiving series. Our next slot of videos will be all about holiday fun, appetizers, entree, all the things. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me. Happy Thanksgiving, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.